I'm very proud of what we do at REEG. I have a great team and I often wonder when I'm abroad why our meat has been bought by some of the most important and well-known accounts in these far-off places. They could be buying Welsh lamb, but they're buying Reeg lamb. The one thing I think which makes a big point of difference is the way we produce these animals. Using the highest animal welfare standards enforced upon us by the Soil Association, our governing body, we cut out all stress. And by cutting out stress, you end up with something that is so much better. I'm Robert Newbra, I'm the 8th Baron Newbra. The family name is Wynne and we have resided in Wales since the 9th century. Up until 1938, we owned a large proportion of North Wales. Glyncliffen was the family home until 1948 and was by far the largest estate that the family owned. Re came into the family in 1637 by marriage. The previous house was burnt down and the house at this moment was built in about 1810. Parkland goes back before that and there are a lot of mature trees which are now protected. We also have a burial mound, we have a Roman road and in the distance you can see an Iron Age fort. So the area is rich in history. I was born and brought up by my father to farm and then much to his disappointment went off and did everything else other than farming. And it was only in his twilight years that I came back to Rieg and took over an interest in helping him out in the last four years of his life. I'm Gareth Jones, I'm the estate farm manager and I've been here for 22 years. When I came here the farm was run conventionally by Lord Newborough's father, uh, so I spent five years getting to know the farm basically and then when the old Lord Newborough passed away in October 1998 we took the decision then to convert the whole farm to organic. It's a two-year conversion process to convert the land. So we became organic in October 2000. We set up our own retail shop on site in 2002. Uh, and Lord Newborough then was farming in Shropshire as well. So he converted the farm in Shropshire to organic in 2004. And then we set up the farm on the coast in 2006. Rig is very different today to what it was when we began. When I took over from my father, we employed nine people on the farm. We now have turned into a farming, retailing, wholesaling, and we do a lot of alternative energy. We're trying to sweat every asset that we have. The number of people employed has gone from nine to 110. Employment in this part of North Wales is extremely important and now I feel that we're contributing a great deal to the welfare of this area. We were only offering beef and lamb, you know, which is what we were producing off the farm conventionally. Uh, and then when we converted to organic and started selling to, to the various restaurants, they were asking for different products. So we started producing chickens of our own. And on the farm in Shropshire, we started producing pork. All the chefs are looking for different products and that point of difference and the way we manage the landscape and the farm being organic, coupled with the environment schemes that we're involved in within Wales, you know, from the mountain you see behind us, you know, we graze that with cattle and sheep to promote the best use of that grazing 
uh, on the landscape to enhance things like the grouse numbers up there. Like any sporting estate, it also has a wealth of country life. It has fishing, shooting, and many other activities that you would find on a landed estate of this kind. Through Riga Estate, we have the River Dee, which is joined by the River Alwyn, and is also well known for its salmon fishing and sea trout fishing. My name's David Pooler. I'm the head gamekeeper on Riga Estate. Gamekeeping has a very bad press over the last sort of 40, 50 years. In gamekeeping nowadays, we're more wildlife managers and conservation. The amount of conservation work we do is terrific as a, as a general for the whole of Britain. It's a value of 250 million pounds is spent from shooting providers into habitat management and conservation. We plant wildlife corridors to link woodlands and watercourses up to habitats. But in those wildlife habitats, you've got ground nesting bird areas. On there is the, a small number of black grouse and red grouse. The black grouse are a red listed bird. And the conservation with funding is uh, trying to restore the number of black grouse up on the burwins. With that, we'll get the, the waders back on the burwins, the curlew, the lapwing, and many of the other species like merlin, which is a, a, another red listed bird. But none of them will manage to expand in numbers without habitat management and predator control. One of the exciting things of farming organically is what the environment has to offer us and to work with it. In the pastures, clover is very important. We also have herbs like chicory, which is a natural wormer, which the sheep go and eat if they feel they have a worm burden. We also leave grass strips round the edges of our crops. So if we have an aphid attack into the crop, out of the grass strip come the ladybirds and they eat the aphid. I'm John Dyke. I'm a shepherd on the Riga Estate. I've been here for about 30 years now. I've seen quite a few changes since I've been here. But I think one of the biggest changes is when Lord Newborough took over from his father and we became organic. And that was a big step to take. That involved no use of nitrogen. But that's, that affected grass production to start with. But over time, the ground seemed to lose the need for the drug, shall we say, of nitrogen. And clovers came, and herbs and clover produces nitrogen anyway, naturally. And our grass production crept up again. Are we there? Since organic have lambed outside, because there's no interference, everything is stress-free. The sheep will select a corner, go off there, have the lambs. They'll stay there maybe for a day and gradually come out. There is no interference manually, shall we say. They're perfectly capable of having lambs themselves. All I do is go round three or four times a day, just checking them. Is everything all right? So it's quite stress-free. Although our main farming unit is at Rieg, we are now farming an increasing acreage over on the coast on the Glyncliffen Estate on a farm called Timar. It is situated close to Carnarvon, south from Bellan Ford. Timar is a very important part of Rieg. Timaur consists of all types of ground, from good, fertile ground, right through to rough grazing, right through to sand dunes as well. We finish around 3,000 lambs at Timaur every year and produce around 160 to 180 store cattle. Tima is quite special because it grows special grasses like samphire, sea lavender, coarse grasses. And our flock of sheep there eat these grasses and it gives a wonderful, delicate, sweet flavour to the meat. A lot of chefs will 
of their right arm to be able to have salt marsh lamb on their menus. We also house our Aberdeen Angus breeding herd over there simply because it is light sandy land, it's dry in the winter, they can be housed outside which is more healthy for the animal and they calve outside. The cows rear the calves until they're 10 months of age and then they're brought over to Reed where they're finished, aged about 24 months. We've had personal contact with all our customers and we can now produce for them or supply them with anything they want. They want a large lamb? Fine, they can have it. I can go into a field and I could have orders for, I want 15 lambs, 18 kilos. Another customer that needs smaller lambs this week, and I can select for each individual customer. A week later, we'll have feedback. Were they right, were they wrong? So that's great. And that, I think, from my perspective, is a big bonus because I'm getting more pride in what I do. My name's Gary Jones. I'm the production manager here at Reek Organic Farm. We are a fully qualified EEC approved cutting plant. We have a salsa approved, soil association approved, and halal approved. Which means to say we have to meet all the high standards of all those bodies for us to produce products for our customers. We produce organic chickens. Just to give you a bit of background, our chickens are between 12 and 14 weeks of age before they go off to the abattoir. They've grown, they've had a life, They've been naturally fed on organic products, which makes the meat much more tender and much more flavoursome because they've had a long, slow growth. We also produce salt marsh lamb at our farm in Carnarvon. We also have standard lambs at Weag Organic Farm in Corwin. What we do with our Aberdeen Angus beef is we have a distinct under 24 months before they go to slaughter. And then they're put in our dry aging chamber, which we have quite unique in as much as that it's a 28 day dry aged product. We have a separate room built which has been approved by the London Halal Authority. They come round and inspect us once a month for all our products to make sure they're kept separate. You have to identify to anyone coming into the factory that they are using different colour ovals, different tools, different knives, different areas. So if you wear a blue oval, you're doing halal. If you wear a white oval, you do a non-halal. We've just invested heavily into a new packing machine, which will give us a skin pack. It allows our customers to have a longer shelf life, so all the delicatessen that we serve in London can have two weekends. So they've got an extra shelf life for their products. Our target export customers tend to be places where everything is imported from some part of the world. We supply in Hong Kong, the Mandarin Oriental. In Singapore, the Supernature Organic Stores. In Dubai, the Berge Al Arab, a seven-star hotel. In Abu Dhabi, the Ritz. These are really high prestigious accounts. Rig is unique in a way because it is one of the last remaining true field plate operations in the country. Not only do we produce the meat at Rig, but we also sell it here. I'm Elliot from the League Estate Bistro. I'm one of a team of chefs. I'd say the food that we produce here is simple, but cooked really well, with a slight twist here and there to keep it interesting. We try to use local produce wherever we can. We grow our own herbs in the herb garden and quite a lot of vegetables here. It's a real pleasure to be able to work with a field-to-fork experience, so meat's reared here on the farm butchered down in the cutting plant and then it comes up to us and we finish it off here so we see out the whole process here at Reed. The demand for bison meat has surpassed the supply. We now have a herd of 70 bison. Bison meat has special qualities. It's lower in fat, it's higher in essential vitamins and higher in omega-3 than fish or chicken. So if one is worried about what you eat, this is about as healthy as you can get. The local sheep shearing competition is held here every year. It happens at the end of the Royal Welsh Show Week. So the shearers have a circuit, if you like, and it's an international competition. So they go to various places like Lampeter, then on to the Royal Welsh Show, and then they come here to what's known as Corwin Shears. And it's quite a big event, anyone's getting bigger. 
and next year we'll be hosting a Royal Welsh Grassland event, which would be a, quite a big event. At Rig, wherever we can, we'd embrace alternative energy sources. And now at Rig, we have geothermal, solar, hydro. And over on the coast, wind turbines. Last year, we were producing from Rig enough electricity to service 700 homes. By the end of this financial year, we will be supplying enough electricity for over 7,000 homes. And this is our contribution to the environment. I've had the privilege of working here, as I say, for 28 years and seeing us change from a, a traditional family farm to an organic thriving business and it's very nice to be part of that. We try to listen to our customers as much as we can through the comment cards and TripAdvisor and stuff like that and take on board what people are saying and evolve with that. You have to be very passionate to work for Reeg and I've got a very passionate team which I lead and I'm very proud to be in a position where I'm able to say that my products are eaten by all people in all the top restaurants throughout the world. Something Lord Newborough is very good at is not letting the grass grow under his feet, if you like, and looking for new ideas, new ventures, diversification, and he's particularly good at opening new markets, especially abroad. So it's getting our name and the brand out there, you know, not only in Wales, the UK, but throughout the world. My vision for the future is to continue to grow the Reed brand and to supply a secure future for the next generation. Not only one that is environmentally secure, but also financially secure. Reed will continue to supply important employment in this part of North Wales. I hope that Reed will be an important part of North Wales for many years to come.